Hi, I'm Mike Mazzalongo and this is the Bible Talk video blog. I'd like to read you a passage from the beautiful book by Solomon called Ecclesiastes. In chapter three, beginning in verse one, this is what he writes. There's an appointed time for everything and there is a time for every event under heaven, a time to give birth and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to shun embracing, a time to search and a time to give up as lost, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear apart and a time to sew together, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. This very famous passage in the Bible contains one of life's most precious lessons, and that is, there is a time for everything. When we realize that there is a time for every event in life, it adds so much to our existence. For example, knowing this principle helps put our life situation into proper perspective. You know, I remember uh, when I uh, was uh, younger and my wife and I were raising small children, we had four little kids running around the house, and I remember being so tired at that time as a dad. You know, the diapers, the running around, the fevers, the crying at night, uh, the feeling of, of being a prisoner uh, of, of, of these four children seemed that it, it would never end. But other more experienced parents comforted my wife and I by reassuring us that this was just a, a phase that we were going through and it would end very soon. What they were saying in essence was, this was the time to give birth. This, there was a time to raise small children and that time would pass and probably never come again. You know, it's a comforting thought to know that birth and death and hurt and healing are all natural parts of life. It doesn't take away the pain or it doesn't take away the fatigue of some situations, but it helps them, uh, it helps us rather, get these things into proper perspective in our lives. Another, um, another important facet of knowing these things is that uh, uh, when we know this principle, it helps us to live much fuller lives. Uh, you know, some people always feel guilty about having fun. You ever know people like that? They, they've been taught that, that pleasure is somehow not okay, or that it's not as good as work or perhaps even suffering. Some people love the drama of suffering all the time, and, and when things go well, they don't know what to do. But in this passage, the Holy Spirit says that there is a time to laugh, that there is a time to dance or to celebrate in Jewish culture, dancing meant to, to, to celebrate. There is a time to embrace, there is a time to love, and there is a time not to love in life. How much richer and fuller and enjoyable our lives would be if we understood that we can wholeheartedly indulge in having fun. We can wholeheartedly give ourselves to love and to celebration when it is time for such things. And of course, doing it in a decent and, a, and an acceptable manner. So it's so um, gratifying to understand that God gives us times where we can fully celebrate life and we should take every advantage of that. And knowing this principle helps us take advantage of those times. And maybe one other idea, knowing this principle brings great peace of mind. There's nothing new under the sun, Solomon said. God is aware of every single situation that we have in our lives. He rejoices when we rejoice. He provides soothing comfort when we are shut out or hurt or perhaps bewildered by the things that are taking place in our lives. He is beyond time and so He is the master of the times or the experiences that we are going through. Among the many things that our baptism, for example, signifies is the idea that when we are buried in the water with Jesus, we also bury the right to control our lives and give that right over to Jesus Christ. You know, there's great peace of mind that comes with the knowledge that someone more capable than ourselves is directing our lives. Again, I remember way back when I was younger, I was driving with a friend of mine and we were caught in a snowstorm. 
and the road was very dark and very slippery and the visibility was very bad and I myself don't have good vision at night and I happened to be the one driving and I was intent on driving through the storm. So at one point I asked him, uh, uh, I said, uh, so how am I doing? I said, I'm, I'm having trouble seeing the road, you know, but well, I'll get us through. And he answered to me very calmly, he says, well, you may get us through, but you're driving on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> so at that point, I pulled over to the right side of the road and then pulled over and stopped the car and allowed him to take over uh, the driving. You know, there was a great, uh, there was a great relief when I gave up uh, and I relinquished the control of the autom automobile for our combined uh, safety. And so the point I'm trying to make is that when we realize that God is over every time in our lives, when we realize that God is over every experience in our lives, whether it is good or bad, there comes great peace of mind knowing that He can guide us, that He can help us if we simply relinquish the control of our lives into His hands. Well, I don't know what time uh, that you are experiencing in your life at this moment. I, I have no idea uh, who is out there uh, listening, uh, but certainly all of you are in one particular situation or another. If you are in these situations and bewildered uh, by what is happening, try to remember the following. No matter what, it's only for a time. It'll be replaced by something else sooner or later. And so either enjoy it or bear under it because it'll change sooner or later. Secondly, don't be afraid to rejoice and be happy when it is time. It's not a sin to drink a full cup of happiness. There'll be sad times soon enough. We might as well enjoy the good times while we have them and give thanks to God for them. And finally, let God take control of all the times in your life. Being in the driver's seat never brings you too much peace of mind. Only worry about whether or not you'll be able to negotiate the next curve. So it's always easier to let the more capable driver uh, into the driver's seat. And in this case, certainly God is that capable driver. Remember, God knows the past, He knows the present, and He knows the future. And He can do a much better job of directing our lives than we can. Well, that's the message from the blog today. If you need to have some feedback, if you want prayer, if you want information on more lessons that we have, you can contact me, mike at bibletalk.tv. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.